So I had just realized that all the books that I've read this week were all translated works from international authors. Also, they're all pretty fucked up, so I'm going to talk about it. Now, all of these books have some pretty strong triggers, so if you're someone with sensitivities, definitely look it up. So, the first one we're going to talk about is The Kingdom by Fuminori Nakamura, and this was disappointing. I thought I was going to get an interesting crime thriller. Unfortunately, it did not deliver. It has an interesting premise. It's about Yurika, this woman uh, who works for this guy who is apparently in a in this big crime organization and she basically pretends to be a prostitute so she could take incriminating photos of her clients usually public figures or uh, people in politics journalism and it was interesting but man the way it was delivered i don't know it was disappointing now, there are a lot of planned moments in here that i felt was written to have an effect and it made the main character look like an idiot now Here's the thing, if you're written as a femme fatale, I would assume you'd be a little bit more cautious and intelligent, but here's the thing, maybe this is spoilers, but if you've ever walked into a room that you've never been in and you see a corpse, what do you do? You don't just stand there and chill and look at the body. Yes, okay, maybe let's say she was shocked. You don't wait for a phone call. And even if the phone rings in that room, don't put yourself in the scene of the crime. Just just leave. Don't answer it. And Okay, she answers it. Who was it? The main antagonist of the book. You know, it's, it's a little cheesy. It's a little too convoluted and planned, really. So I, I did not like that. Now, unfortunately, all the characters in this book felt like cardboard cutouts. I was not able to empathize with any of them. Even the protagonist, she constantly talks about the heat of her body, how she starts to feel the heat of her body rising, how she starts to feel hot. It could be a drinking game, I swear. And sure, it's part of the character, but maybe you use different words. Maybe there are other words other than heat and body. So maybe use that. I don't know. It's just, it felt weird reading that especially knowing that this was written by a dude but yeah this i was not able to connect with any of the characters it felt like it was about a woman who just went to this place and then that place and then did this thing and then that thing and then it was like ah, eh, it had no effect on me whatsoever they could have all died in this book and i would have been like oh cool now about halfway through the book i accepted it for what it was it was it was like entertaining at times but it was just not the story for me maybe this would have worked better if it was in a different medium maybe if it's a video game a short film or maybe a manga anime i think that would have worked better but as a 200 page book i don't know I, I don't think it was worth it one thing that i liked about this book or well i don't know if i hate it but i maybe here's the thing so this author, instead of using, uh, you know, verbs like he laughed, she laughed, this motherfucker says, ha, ha, ha. Now, maybe that's pushing the envelope, but I don't know if there really is such a thing as fate. And if it knows what will become of all humans lives, my consciousness is joining that giant divine fate. Ha, ha, ha. My consciousness is becoming one with the power that does whatever it wants with your life. This powerful, unforgiving providence. Ha! <laughs> this is not for me. I'm sorry. But it, here's the thing. I appreciate everything that I read. So I appreciate this book for letting me know that books like this are not for me. Now, the next book that I read is Lemonade by Nina Pinacci. Now, this is a psychological thriller under the guise of a romance book. I enjoyed some of the romance, the cute little romance moments in this book, but every time I'm reminded of how we got there, the veil gets lifted. The author did an amazing job in making the readers ask questions, or rather, think of answers to very difficult questions. Now, to preface what I'm about to say, this is the first romance book that I've read, and I have zero idea about the sub-genres of romance. So as someone who loves 
dark room fantasy. I thought dark romance was just going to be a romance with side plots involving murder, torture, uh, war, and random acts of savagery. It's not. Let me tell you this. I was not prepared for that scene. It, I, I finished this book days ago and it still haunts me. Thank the universe this was fiction. I don't think I would have been able to get past that scene otherwise. And that's also the beauty with fiction. I think it allows us to experience and explore a extremely high stakes situations in various heightened emotional states, but still have a safety net to catch us. So whenever this got to a little too disturbing, I, I, I immediately, you know, there's that thought at the back of my mind where, hey, this is fiction. You're good. This is fiction. So that's what I love about fiction. So I love a tortured hero. I love uh, juicy villain backstories. I love redemption arcs. But this story makes you, I guess, ask the question, how far can a person go? How far can a character go before they become truly irredeemable? Are there certain lines that once they cross, there's no turning back? So those are the kinds of questions that this book makes you think about. And I just love that. At times I find myself simultaneously empathizing, but also just appalled and reviled by this character. So it's a very confusing read because you're questioning like your own, I guess, moral code. Essentially, this is a book about two people trying to regain the power that was unjustly stolen from them. It's a fascinating book about human behavior, about how people create their own emotional justifications for the atrocities that they commit. It's about how people make excuses for other people undeserving of forgiveness. So those are the themes that are explored in this book. And I think she did an amazing job in just exploring those themes. She did not, I guess, underplay any of the difficult moments in this book, but also it felt, it felt super believable. It felt real. Now, objectively speaking, is this a good book? I don't think so. The revenge arc was a letdown. The, all of the side characters felt like one-sided caricatures of themselves. And the language fluctuates between modern and 18th, 19th century-ish English. I don't know. I was still able to appreciate it for what it is. It's a nice little toxic romance, psychological thriller set in the Victorian era. This is not the type of book that I would read for pleasure. I think this is the book that I would read if I need to research for a role or a specific uh, role. I think it helped satiate my curiosity for human behavior and the psychology of human beings. But for reading for fun, no, dog, that's not fun at all. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And please, for the love of cranberries, look up trigger warnings if you plan to read this. So the next one is The Blind Owl by Sadegh Hidayat. And how are you doing mentally? Like, what is your current mental state? If your answer is anything other than fucking fantastic, I hear the birds singing everywhere I go. Maybe hold off on this for a little bit. Wait till you're a better place before starting this, because among the three that I've mentioned, this is the one that fucked me up the most. This is a very disturbing book. It's incredibly morbid. So if you like works of Edgar Allan Poe, maybe give this a try. So this book starts off as, I guess, the depressing stream of consciousness of a very troubled man. And then it descends into total madness. It's a very macabre depiction of the mind of a very deranged man. I genuinely felt uncomfortable the entire time I was reading this, it felt like I was trapped in someone else's decaying mind. So if you if you know that movie, if you've seen the movie, uh, I, I think it's called Buried. It's Ryan Reynolds movie. It's the movie where he was uh, trapped in a coffin for the entire the entirety of the movie. That's what it feels like to read this book. So if you're interested to see what it feels like to, I guess, lose your mind. Sure, give this a shot but I'm warning you, this is a hella disturbing. So all of these books that I've mentioned, they are, they have really strong triggers and they're very disturbing. So 
you have sensitivities, I'm going to say it again. Look it up. Peace.